bringing the bees back. It turns out there may be hope for the declining bee population after all. According to a study published in Scientific Reports, a vaccine made from two mushroom species, tinder fungus and red reishi mushrooms, could be vital in saving the bee population. The researchers specifically targeted mycelia, a cobweb-like fungal membrane found in both the mushrooms to create the vaccine. The team conducted their study with two groups of bees exposed to varroa mites. One group was giving mycelium extract mixed with sugar syrup, while the other was only given sugar syrup. The virus levels of the bees were measured, and scientists found that those who consumed mycelium extract saw a 45,000-fold reduction in a virus linked to a colony collapse disorder, a phenomenon where bee colonies are wiped out. Scientists involved in the study say they believe the vaccine would help support the immune system of the bees and to allow natural immunity to be strong enough to reduce the viruses. According to a report by the Florida Department of Agriculture, the study comes amid reports of colony collapse disorder, leading to the bee population decreasing by at least 30% and 90% in some areas. Here are more stories about vaccines. New hope for HIV patients. University of Maryland and Duke University researchers have designed a new vaccine that was able to stimulate an immune response against HIV's protective shield. HIV virus cells are covered with a protective protein called GP120, which itself is covered by a sugar shield to help bolster its defenses. Some infected individuals who can keep the virus at bay without medication often have antibodies that attack the protein. There has been little success in creating a similar vaccine because the sugars found in the shield resemble sugars in the human body. It's also difficult to engineer antibodies that can be effective against the multiple strains of HIV, which frequently mutate. Using a synthetic chemistry method, scientists have now designed a vaccine combining a GP120 fragment and a sugar molecule and tested it on HIV-infected rabbits. The vaccine prompted the rabbit's immune systems to produce antibodies that physically bound to GP120, found in four dominant HIV strains. It takes roughly two years to build immunity against HIV, so despite sticking to the virus, the antibodies weren't able to prevent further infection. But the vaccine's ability to induce a strong immune response in a short amount of time is encouraging, and researchers believe further studies can produce a vaccine that can ultimately neutralize the deadly virus. New Vaccine Kills Cancer in Mice Stanford University researchers used immune stimulators to target cancerous tumors, and it worked surprisingly well. T-cells that defend against cancer often end up overpowered by the disease, but scientists find they can be rejuvenated using CPG oligonucleotides and anti-OX40 antibodies. When a microgram of the immune-stimulating agents were injected directly into mouse tumors, the growths disappeared in about 10 days. CPG activates dendritic cells that help against tumor counterattacks, while anti-OX40 antibodies stimulate T cells into attacking the cancer. Once a tumor is destroyed, the cells move through the body to find and eliminate other similar growths. The experiment eradicated lymphoma in 87 out of 90 mice and also worked on breast, colon, and melanoma cancers. The team is looking to start clinical trials to see if the treatment will be as successful in humans. Protecting Plants Without Pesticides Conventional pesticides are a double-edged sword that scientists are now seeking to replace with more natural RNA-based plant vaccines. Without pesticides, roughly 70% of the world's crops would be lost to pests, but such chemicals are toxic, killing insects but also affecting the rest of the environment. A new approach developed in Finland and France involves directly spraying plant leaves with an RNA-based vaccine that inoculates against specific pests or pathogens. The vaccine triggers a process called RNA interference, which prevents invading RNA strands from carrying out their functions, thus causing the pest to die. RNA molecules in the vaccine do not negatively affect the host plant. The RNA also has the added benefit of being biodegradable because it breaks down quickly. Instead of chemical synthesis, scientists use a bacteria-eating virus called a bacteriophage to help generate the RNA. But with no relevant legislation in existence to govern its use, it's hard to say when the vaccine will be available commercially. 
All the vaccine you'll need in one single shot. MIT has developed a drug delivery method that packs multiple doses in a single injection and could soon make multi-shot vaccines a thing of the past. Biodegradable polymers used in implants, sutures, and prosthetic devices were pressed into silicone molds to form tiny cups, each measuring 400 micrometers across. The cups are filled with vaccine and covered with a lid made from the same polymer. Heat is applied to fuse the cap and lid together, sealing the vaccine inside. Varying its chemical makeup allows the polymers to degrade at specific times, though all are delivered simultaneously via a single injection. Inside the body, the vaccine is released once the cup degrades. Lab tests on mice showed the polymer cups successfully releasing their payload in 9, 20, and 41 days without prior leakage. Researchers say the new technology could benefit patients in developing nations, who are often unable to travel frequently to healthcare facilities to complete their shots. It may also allow newborns to be given an injection carrying one or two years' worth of vaccines, minimizing stressful, tear-filled doctor's visits for kids and parents alike. Cuba developing a vaccine for lung cancer. America wants in. What's the first thing you think of when you see someone puffing on a stogie? Yup, Cubans, the finest cigars the world has to offer. But it may surprise you to find out Cuba is actually becoming known for its success in treating lung cancer. A new vaccine, Simovax, has been in development in Cuba for a quarter of a century. Simovax targets a growth factor in the body called EGF, which allows cancer to survive. By attacking EGF, the cancer starves and its growth slows, extending a patient's life for as long as an extra year and a half. Early studies with Simovax have shown minimal side effects like nausea, fever, and vomiting, but it's a small price to pay for less cancer. The drug's been used to treat 5,000 cases of lung cancer worldwide, but with FDA approval pending, testing could still be a ways away in America. After the U.S. made nights with Cuba in December 2014, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo went on a trade mission to Havana last year to get the ball rolling to bring the drug to America. Now, there's more hope than ever for the estimated 224,000 plus Americans living with lung cancer.